Hello YouTube and welcome to my horror house. Today we're going to be looking through my horror movie collection. I've got a big assortment of horror Blu-rays, DVDs, and all sorts of different subgenres of the main horror genre. We've got a lot of different franchises, a lot of different movies here to cover. I'm ready to rumble. I've been waiting a long, long time to do this collection. I've been slowly but surely beefing this up over the years, and just today's the day. We're going to tackle this. I've been waiting, and now it's happening. If you look up top here, we got lots of very important characters. We got Sidney Prescott. We have got Dr. Loomis. You've got Daniel Harris up there. Cute little Jamie Lloyd. We've got Dewey and Gale. Julie James. Tommy Jarvis. we got, you know, Andy and Chucky. Cute little Alex Vincent. We've got Laurie Strode. We've got to have Jamie Lee Curtis in there. We've got Rachel Carruthers. Nancy Thompson. Kirby Reed. And, you know, I've got, got to have one villain in there. we got to have Pamela Voorhees. So we got a little bit of a long video coming here. We are going to dive into this and we are ready to rumble. We're going to start it off here with the six film Alien collection box set ranging everything from the original Alien up through Alien Covenant. Basically all I really care about is the Ripley, you know, quadrilogy as a lot of us like to say from Alien, Aliens, Alien 3 through Resurrection. Don't really care about Prometheus or Covenant, but you know... This thing was like, got it for like 20 bucks at Walmart. Couldn't say no. Then we're going to have Annabelle. Annabelle Creation. Annabelle Comes Home. In my opinion, the greatest found footage movie. The Blair Witch Project. The marketing for this was fantastic. Cabin in the Woods. 1974. Black Christmas, Margot Kidder, Olivia Hussey, what are we going to do? If I could give everybody a recommendation, we have a great, great fan film. It's me, Billy, on Dave McRae's channel. And he is in the process of creating it. He's in production on It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2. Go and watch those. A sad, sad Blu-ray box seven, A Nightmare on Elm Street, ranging everything from the original from 1984 up through Wes Craven's New Nightmare in 1994. We've got Megan, The Invisible Man, Puppet Master Remake, Tim Curry's It from 1990, the miniseries, It Chapter One. It Chapter 2, another fantastic film. John Carpenter's The Thing. We got a little terror train going with Jamie Lee Curtis. Happy birthday to me. The Devil's Machine. Sleepaway Camp with Felissa Rose as Angela Baker. Terrifier. Art the Clown, oh yeah. Terrifier 2, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, Red Dragon, and Kevin Bacon's Stir of Echoes. We've got The Divine Fury, a fantastic movie, 7 with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, The Purge. Here we go. Steven Spielberg's masterpiece, Jaws. A fantastic sequel in Jaws 2. We've got the Jaws 3 movie collection, including Jaws 2, Jaws 3, and Jaws the Revenge. Don't even get me started on that. Jennifer's Body. The original Jeepers Creepers. The Grudge remake. Nicole Kidman and the others. The first three paranormal, paranormal Activity movies. The Human Centipede. Trick. We've got 
Never Sleep Again and Crystal Lake Memories. Fantastic, fantastic explanations of how those two franchises came to be, movie by movie. How they explain it, it's just epic. Deadly Friend, Wes Craven Classic with Chrissy Swatson. We got Sissy Spacek, Sissy Spacek here and Carrie, a Stephen King classic. The original, The Fly. Return of the Fly. Curse of the Fly. The Fly remake. And then The Fly 2. A godfather in the horror genre. Alfred Kitchcock's Psycho. A fantastic return with Psycho 2 in 1983. Psycho 3, a very lackluster, poor television movie. Anthony Perkins in Psycho 4, the beginning. You know, Olivia Hussey in there, it's kind of cool, you know. Then you get to this. I mean, what are the chances of a cocaine out in the bear? You know, this cocaine bear, it's like, what are you going to see, a bear out in the woods doing drugs? I mean, come on, don't just don't even get me started on that. But it was a damn good time. Here we have... The Conjuring from 2013, arguably probably the greatest horror movie of the 21st century, it was a fantastic experience in the theater. I mean, I was well, 20, 21 years old when this came out, still remember it like it was yesterday. Then we have The Conjuring 2, The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, a Wes Craven classic in Cursed, fantastic werewolf flick with Christina Ricci. Now we're getting into some movies. From the post-scream boom. Starting it off with Urban Legend from 1998. The Faculty. This was Josh Hart and it's back-to-back -back after H2O. This was a fantastic movie. Cherry Falls with Brittany Murphy. Rest in peace, girl. An extremely important movie to my horror liking. I Know What You Did Last Summer. Julie James, Helen Shivers, Barry Cox. I mean, you got, you got it. Just like these, it's crazy. Jennifer Love Hewitt. You got Ryan Felipe, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince. You know, just he's just Ray, Ray Bronson. Come on. Final destination. Thanksgiving. I have just picked this movie up. I have yet to see this because this was not playing in my theater. Piranha Remake. The Strangers. Possession. George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. We've got Orphan. The best, in my opinion. The Lost Boys. This definitively defines the 80s. Vampires, whatever you want to throw at it. We have got Krampus. And now we're on to another very important franchise. Starting it off with the original, 1998, Child's Play. Child's Play 2. Child's Play 3. Bride of Chucky. The abysmal Seed of Chucky. Back on track here with Curse of Chucky. Cult of Chucky. And the reboot from 2019, Child's Play. I'm all right with this. No Charles Lee Ray, but Mark Hamill made it his own with this whole AI doll thing. We've got the original Candyman. Candyman 2, Farewell to the Flesh. We've got Day of the Dead, Candyman 3. This whole legacy sequel to Candyman from 2021, I personally didn't mind it too much. It was... It was a good spin, a good little return to form. I'm all right with it. I could watch this again. I just haven't opened it since I bought it. Happy Death Day. Love this movie. Happy Death Day to you. And now we're on to Friday the 13th, Scream Factory Collection. I've taken these movies out of the box. Friday the 13th from 1980. Part 2, 1981, with... Ginny, Amy Steele, the greatest final girl in the Friday the 13th franchise, in my opinion. Part 3D, you know, Richard Brooker as Jason, digging that. Some say that the final chapter is the quintessential slasher film. 
You know, you got Crispin Glover in there, Crispin Glover in there doing his dance. Cute little Corey Feldman. I'm digging it. A New Beginning, Part 5. Jason Lives. And the New Blood, the beginning of the Kane Hodder era. You know, Jason versus Carrie? Come on. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, this is where we take a turn for the worse. Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan. I mean, it really should be Jason takes a boat ride to Vancouver, for God's sakes. Jason goes to hell. Don't get me started. I said not to get me started, but Jason X, oh my goodness. Freddy vs. Jason. The 09 remake. First 20 minutes of this movie had me jumping for joy, then it went downhill. Just some bonus content here. Now we're on to another very, very important franchise here with Wes Craven. Thank you very, very much for saving us in the late 90s with... The masterpiece, Scream. You've got the greatest final girl in the history of horror, in my opinion, Nev Campbell, a.k.a. Sidney Prescott. You've got Matthew Lillard, Skeet Ulrich, cute little Drew in there in the beginning, taking that hit for all of us. You've got just the, the cast on this with David Arquette is cute little Dewey, Deputy Dewey. Courtney Cox is Gail Weathers. It's just every bit of this movie is pure perfection. Scream 2, a fantastic sequel the next year. I know a lot of people have the hate for Scream 3, but I still love it. It's just, I love everything. Scream 4, first Scream movie I ever saw in the theater. I went and saw this five times. Scream 5, a.k.a. 5 Cream, loved it. Sydney passing the torch. Let's just hope she's back for 7, if 7 does happen. Scream 6, we didn't have Nev in this. Dewey was gone, but Kirby came back. I was digging this. I'm all right with it. It was not Ghostface Takes Manhattan. I am all right. We've got some Stephen King films here. We're starting it off with Children of the Corn. Then we're going to rock some Cujo. The Mist, a movie that really freaked me out as a little kid. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery 2. Cute little Drew and Firestarter, the original. Some would say the greatest horror movie ever created, The Exorcist. Definitely in my top five. Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Exorcist 3, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Matthew Lillard and 13 Ghosts. We've got a Great psychological thriller with What Lies Beneath, Michelle Pfeiffer, Harrison Ford. Got to rock it all here. Creep Show. Creep Show 2. Halle Berry, Gothica. Everybody's got to have a cool little crocodile movie. I got Croc here. Got some wrong turn films here. The original. Part 2. Part 3. Part 4. Part 5. Part 6 has been hard to find with some controversy. I don't really care about the remake. And here we have a Scream Factory collection of, in my opinion, the greatest horror franchise of all time, Halloween. And we're going to start it off with not only my favorite horror movie of all time, but my all-time favorite film, John Carpenter's Halloween what is there to say that has not already been said about this movie? It is pure perfection from top to bottom. I might not be the biggest Laurie Strode fan, but Jamie Lee Curtis knocks it out of the park. Donald Pleasance, Dr. Loomis, it's just pure perfection. Nick Castle, the greatest shape of all time. The greatest Michael, everything from top to bottom. It's just a 11 out of 10. I will watch this movie every day till the day I die. Halloween 2. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. A fan favorite in Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, the introduction to Jamie Lloyd. You know, Donald Pleasance is still rocking it as Loomis in there. I, you know, Rachel Carruthers, Ellie Cornell, is a better, in my opinion, a better final girl than Laurie Strode in Halloween. In this, I love Halloween 4 to bits. 
But then again, you got Halloween 5, not so much. They kill off Rachel 15, 20 minutes into the movie. Daniel Harris is a mute halfway through the movie. You know, Michael is just a clown. It's just, it's pathetic. It's sad, but I have to have it. It is what it is. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Both theatrical and producer's cuts. I, same thing, same thing. I don't care. The Cult of Thorn, garbage. Now we've got Halloween H2O. This might be the greatest performance that Jamie Lee Curtis has given in the series, the best portrayal of Laurie Strode, but this movie is, as Dave McRae would say, it's like Michael Myers walked onto the set of Dawson's Creek. Next, the worst movie in the Halloween franchise, in my opinion. My first cinematic experience of Halloween 2002's Halloween Resurrection. What do I need to say about Busta Rhymes drop kicking Michael Myers through that wall? I mean, kung fu, all this crazy stuff. It was just pure garbage from top to bottom. I remember walking out of that theater with my big brother as a 10 year old, feeling sick to my stomach. I had a little bit of hope when it came to Rob Zombie's films as a teenager, but Rob Zombie's who he is, and Michael Myers is not what Rob Zombie made him to be. But I respect the first one a lot more than this pile of dog shit. We've got another Scream Factory collection here from everything from 1978's Halloween through Rob Zombie's H2. On to the David Gordon Green trilogy of Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills. And Halloween Ends. We've got Trick or Treat. X. And Pearl. I cannot wait for Maxine later this year. Mia Goth has been knocking it out of the park. Now, for me, I'm a horror fan. This is my Mean Girls. The Craft. Starring my favorite actress of all time, the great Neff Campbell. I don't know why in the world I had this down here. I still know what you did last summer. Kind of a lackluster sequel to the original, but compared to I'll always know what you did last summer, whew, this is a masterpiece. You know, it's still kind of cool. I don't like that they go on an island and stuff, but Julian Ray returned, and I'm all right with it. Brandy, you know, it is what it is. We'll see if this whole reboot, like if Julian Ray come back, we got to have Jennifer Love Hewitt on board for this new film if it happens. Outpost. Killer, crown, killer Clowns from Outer Space, excuse me. The Skeleton Key. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, arguably another one of those great all-time horror films. And then Dr. Sleep, Ewan McGregor. Oh, yes. The next chapter in The Shining story. We're going to rock some 80s slashers here. We got Graduation Day. Maniac Cop. Pieces. 1980s, Prom Night, a little Jamie Lee Curtis on that cover there. The Burning, with a young Jason Alexander, as you all know him as George Costanza. 81's, My Bloody Valentine. Excuse me there. Hell Nights, Linda Blair, cute little Reagan, all grown up. Maniac. Final Exam. Girls' Night Out, The Demon, Slumber Party Massacre, Chopping Mall, very underrated, a cult classic in April Fool's Day, Amy Steele right there, we're all loving it. Then we got a fun, fun movie here in Piranha, the original, The Howling. The Blob remake. Love it. Now, we got a very, in my opinion anyway, very underrated, undervalued early 2000s slasher in Valentine. I, I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for this movie, no matter how cheesy it is. The original Amityville Horror. The remake with Ryle Reynolds. And then, out of that 2000s remake boom, I... I always thought My Bloody Valentine 3D was was a hot hit. I, I was digging it. It did not ruin the intention of that original film. I'm all right with it. 
Here we have the only proper Nightmare on Elm Street box set we have ever received. And this was printed 25 years ago from 1999 with the cute little Snapcase DVDs. We've got Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. What is there to say about this film? Just like Halloween, just like Friday the 13th, Freddy Krueger is a pillar in horror. Nancy Thompson, in my opinion, two or three on the all-time greatest final girl lists. Robert Englund as Freddy is fucking scary in this movie. He knocks it out of the park. It is epic on all levels. Freddy's Revenge, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. The fan favorite Dream Warriors. Gotta rock that docking. Patricia Arquette knocks it out of the park in this film. I like Kincaid. I, you know, it just, John Saxon coming back, you know, Heather coming back as Nancy. This is a fantastic film, but, you know, it does not beat the original. Part four, The Dream Master, the last, in my opinion, respectable film in the franchise. I am a fan of Alice's, you know, taking over the franchise, but it just, it does not hold a candle to the original. This is where Freddy just becomes two balls to the walls crazy for me in The Dream Child, not digging it. <sighs> On the same level as Jason Goes to Hell, Halloween Resurrection, Seed of Chucky, you've got Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. To this day, I, I, just, I will despise this movie till the day I die. But then three years later, I would thank Wes Craven for saving us again with New Nightmare in 1994. And we got a cute little, you know, some bonus material here in that set. I'm loving it. Now, I'm not big, big on the Hellraiser franchise, but I do own quite a few of these flicks other than the most recent Hulu remake, you know, reboot there. We've got the original Hellraiser. Then we've got Hellraiser 2, Hellbound. Hell on Earth, Part 3. Hellraiser Bloodline. Inferno. We got Hellseeker. I mean, Hellraiser is what it is. Doug Bradley as Pinhead is just iconic. We got Detter here. Hellraiser Hellworld. Revelations. And then the last movie in my Hellraiser collection is Judgment. Then we get to that Hulu. You know, that movie was pretty awesome a couple years ago. I was digging it, but it just, you know, Doug Bradley is my pinhead. I'm sorry. Evil Dead, the original. Bruce Campbell there, rocking that. We've got Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness. And the Evil Dead remake. We have got the Monster Squad. Pretty funny, goofy little uh, the fr you know, freak out. This is just some crazy parody comedy craziness. Love it though. Sarah Michelle Geller in The Grudge. Gotta love that. The Grudge Two. The Grudge Three. The Return, starring SMG. The only other shark movie I ever really care to talk about, Deep Blue Sea. You know, I love how we're just talking about Sarah Michelle Gellar, but we got Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 1992, with the OG Chrissy Swanson. Gotta love it. On to some John Carpenter flicks here. We've got Prince of Darkness. The Fog. Vampires. Personally, my favorite other than Halloween, I... I gotta say, it's gotta be Christine. One day it's Christine, the next day it's The Fog, but today it's gonna be Christine. Gotta love it. Arnie Cunningham, just that performance, and this, this the whole thing with the Plymouth, it's just, it's all, it's epic on all proportions. I love it. They Live, Roddy Roddy Piper. And then Village of the Damned. Some Wes Craven movies here. The Hills Have Eyes. The Hills Have Eyes, Part 2. They. Kind of corny here, but Dracula 2000, not the biggest fan, but, you know, it's all right. Shocker. A couple of very underrated 
Wes Craven flicks in my opinion. We've got The People Under the Stairs and The Last House on the Left. Gotta love them all though. We've got The Return of the Living Dead. The Ring. The Ring 2. Hereditary. A Pandemic Coronavirus Slasher in Sick. A Peacock original. I, I thought it was pretty fun. Pumpkin Head. The only reason I own this movie is because of what Blumhouse did in 2019 by making another Black Christmas remake and just torching the legacy of that original classic. But we've got the 06 remake of Black Christmas. You know... You got Lacey Chabert in there for all you Party of Five fans and, you know, those mean girl fans out there like my wife. But, you know, I only own this just because of, you know, of what Blumhouse did to torch it with that with that remake in 2019. That was just so horrific that I just said, fine, I'll buy this for a quarter. We've got Zodiac, a fantastic horror comedy from 1999 with Seth Green, Devin Sawa, and Idle Hands. Love the original poster art there. Itsy Bitsy, I Spit on Your Grave, the original. And we've got the remake, I Spit on Your Grave, the unrated cut. I Spit on Your Grave too, unrated. Dead Silence. Cabin Fever. The Pumpkin Carver. Lost Souls, when I, when Oda Ryder knocks it out of the park in this film. Uh, a very forgotten, forgotten late 70s horror flick in When a Stranger Calls. Very underrated, love it. When a Stranger Calls Back, a straight-to-video sequel that came out 13, 14 years later, but I found this at a thrift shop, and I'm like, I'm grabbing this, throwing it with my collection. And then, surprisingly, a pretty damn good remake with When a Stranger Calls. I think this was 2006, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. And then, 1998 Phantoms. You got Rose McGowan, Liv Schreiber, Ben Affleck. I, I, you know, this is a great little sci-fi horror movie. Now we're going to be on to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Since I was a little kid, I have never really been emotionally attached but I do love the original Texas Chainsaw from 1974. Sally Hardestine, you know, was a fantastic final girl. Leatherface is all right. You know, the campy cheesiness of this. But the original and in a Black Christmas in 74, they really they were the launching pads for that slasher boom. I don't really appreciate too much of the dark comedy side that Dennis Hopper went in with the part two. But it's still fun and goofy from time to time. This is where it really goes downhill with Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. Just too much. And along with Freddy's Dead, Jason Goes to Hell, Halloween Resurrection, Seed of Chucky. Basically, in my opinion, Scream's the only one that doesn't have the dumpster fire in the franchise. But you've got the next generation in here. I don't know how McConaughey and Zellweger got, you know, they were in this movie, but it was still trash. But, we had... The remake boom in the 2000s, which created, in my opinion and many others, the greatest remake in horror history, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jessica Biel knocks it out of the park. A grand freaking slam. Texas Chainsaw, the beginning, was alright with this. Not a big, big fan, but don't hate it. Texas Chainsaw 3D, you know, it is what it is. Just gotta be kind of a completist. Leatherface, eh, whatever, I'm alright with it. Then you got the whole thing with Netflix with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, don't have a hard copy of that. Not a big, big fan. We're on to Saw. Same kind of thing. Not a, Never was emotionally attached to the franchise, but I do have the first seven films. We've got the original Saw. Part 2. You got Part 3 in there. Saw 4. Saw 5. Saw 6, 
and then we got the final chapter. I, I don't have Jigsaw, Spiral, I, I didn't even go and see Saw X in the theater. I just, I never had the emotional attachment. Jennifer Conley in Dark Water, a fantastic favorite of mine from my childhood. Eight-Legged Freaks with David Arquette. I can separate Deputy Dewey Riley. I do not see Dewey when I watch Eight-Legged Freaks. Fantastic. Fantastic fun time. From Dusk Till Dawn, Rose Mary's Baby. Another horror franchise I'm not super emotionally attached to, the Final Destination franchise. I really only care about that original film with Devin Sawa and those, that crew, you know. That's what I have. But I got the five film collection, probably paid 25 cents for this at a flea market. Wasn't going to say no. And then we have Anaconda, Ice Cube. and It's just fun. A fun little snake movie. Poltergeist. What is there to say? Poltergeist, it's just fantastic. Steven Spielberg and Toby Hooper, they just created a masterpiece here. I only own the original Hatchet. I know, it'd be kind of cool to have the sequels with Daniel Harrison there, but, you know, it's all right. The Haunting in Connecticut. Hide and see. Cute little Dakota fanning in there. I only own Insidious Chapter 1 and Insidious Chapter 2. Wasn't huge, huge on it. That original one was a bona fide hit, though, gotta say. <sighs> Tremors, the seven movie collection. Sadly, I really only care about the original Tremors, but this thing was ten bucks at Walmart. What am I gonna do? Can't say no. Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. Fantastic. And no, I am not going to the hood. I'm sticking with the original leprechaun i have no need to go to space no need to go to the hood or back to the hood anything like that i am sticking with the original leprechaun a pillar of my childhood still a guilty pleasure to this day no matter how much of a dumpster fire of a film it is jennifer aniston makes her debut in here it was fun i love it feel the same way about critters only care about the first one we've got teeth the shunned Another Jamie Lee Curtis movie. Kind of a sci-fi horror-ish, but we got Virus. Lindsay Lohan, I Know Who Killed Me. This is pretty awesome, right? I've got to say. We liked it. Pretty fun. Smile. Sadly, I only own the original Hostel. Not a big, big fan of them sequels. Ghost Ship, a fantastic opening in horror. That first ten minutes of that movie were fantastic. See No Evil, starring the big red machine, Kane. See No Evil 2, you got Kane and Daniel Harrison there. You know, Kane versus Jamie Lloyd, come on, give me that. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And then last, but certainly not least, we're going to finish it off with Alfred Hitchcock's classic, The Birds. Thank you, everybody. Well, everybody, if you've made it this far, you've reached the end of my collection right now. If you want to leave a comment down in that comment section below and let me know your favorite horror movie, I'd love to know. Let me know if you think there's anything in here that, I, that, I, that I'm that i missing or that you think I should have, anything that i that I got to keep looking for. I mean, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. I'm, I'm so pumped for this to just... I'm going to be going on a journey here. I'm going to be taking some deep, deep dives into this. If I really wanted to, I could have made this video 10 hours long and and gone into insane detail on so many of these flicks. But I, I, I tried to keep it short and sweet. But I, I do have some awesome ideas planned for what I want to do with some top 10 lists and some favorite moments of this and that. And I don't want to give anything away, but please like and subscribe and let, let other people know. If you got any other horror fans and... In, in your in your YouTube algorithm, or you got any friends that want to know about horror movies, just just come to my channel and watch this out. I am I am ready to rumble. I want to do this. I want to build a following, and it's going to be a blast. Thank you guys very much. Until next time, we will see you soon. Peace.